Could you imagine throwing a heavy object into space to an altitude of around 2,000 kilometers without using a fuel-powered rocket? The idea sounds crazy to many, but a young aerospace company founded in 2014 called Spin Launch has proven that it's possible. Indeed, they kicked off an orbital accelerator project that will use electric power to send satellites to LEO. They've even promised an extremely cheap cost per launch and can launch multiple times a day. This company has all the makings and potential to beat out even SpaceX. However, in the past year, the public no longer sees many new updates from the project like before. So what happened to Spin Launch and the Orbital Accelerator? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Ranked among the 100 most influential companies globally, Spin Launch helps open new pathways to space. It uses an electrically powered system to deliver 200 kilogram class satellites into LEO. So what makes Spin Launch's system special otherwise? First, unlike fuel-powered multi-stage rockets, this new vehicle uses a kinetic space launch system as a propulsion engine that converts electrical energy into kinetic energy. This system is also known as an orbital accelerator. According to Spin Launch, Vice President of Technology, David Wren, an orbital accelerator is a ground-based, reusable, electrically powered mass accelerator capable of boosting satellites into space. Its second stage is similar to the traditional stage as it is also chemically powered to deliver the satellite to LEO. Secondly, it's about the unique operational mechanism. The ground system uses a rotating arm called hypersonic tether placed in a large vacuum chamber and a cargo vehicle will be attached to the end of this carbon rope. The tether accelerates the rocket's second stage faster and faster until it reaches launch speed and the launch vehicle is released through the escape tunnel and towards space. At an altitude of 200,000 feet, the chemically powered stage will break free from its protective envelope, which will then deliver the satellite to its LEO destination. Third, by using primarily electric power sources as well as a reusable accelerator and rocket, the company says the system will reduce launch costs by a factor of 10, meanwhile reducing fuel use by up to 70% compared to chemical rockets. Additionally, it is also considered considered more environmentally friendly. For those reasons, this innovative system has attracted the attention of several investors, including NASA, and so far, the project has raised a total funding of $150 million. The company aims to provide affordable and rapid cargo launches to space. The project is currently still under development, and its strategy consists of three phases. First, build the 12-meter experimental accelerator as a prototype, then test the 33-meter suborbital accelerator. All the combined data from both will be the basis for building the future 100-meter orbital accelerator. Spin Launch accelerated its payload to 10,000 times the force of gravity using a prototype collider at its headquarters in Long Beach, California. Once the prototype shows viable results, the suborbital building at Spaceport America, New Mexico will become operational. Its maiden test flight was successful on October 22nd of 2021. On September 27th of 2022, it marked its 10th launch as the vehicle hosted a series of party tests for the first time. The third included NASA, Airbus, and Cornell University. The company said the 10th successful flight demonstrated that standard satellite components are inherently compatible with Spin Launch's launch environment. This is truly an important milestone in the construction of the orbital accelerator. Things initially seemed to go well, as in less than a year, 10 suborbital test flights were carried out. However, after that, phase three of the program was unexpectedly delayed because the company had not yet found a suitable launch location for orbital flights. The company has identified multiple available launch site areas around the world. Since last month, they have been conducting a feasibility study in Western Australia, and in addition, several other locations in Australia have caught their eye. For context, there are four essential criteria for finding a location including operational efficiency, meaning as close to the equator as possible, or as far south as as possible, safety and compliance, environmental impact, and market access. To facilitate feasibility studies on land, Spin Launch has applied for a two-year permit from the Department of Land Planning and Heritage. 
There are not many details about it, and we only know that the agency is in the process of introducing stakeholders to the local authorities. Additionally, it has been reported that the first orbital launch site is being finalized and could be located in the coastal area of the United States. The company is working with the FAA and launch regulatory agencies to authorize the site's launch. Honestly, looking for overseas sites may not have been the best idea. Back in 2018, Hawaii was chosen due to its proximity to the equator, which offers a lot of benefits to companies trying to reach orbit. Spin Launch also pointed out that Hawaii is one of six states it is considering as a future location. Unfortunately, the company faced opposition from residents, faced opposition from residents because they did not want any vehicles creating sound bombs and causing noise pollution near them. In 2020, Unalaska was the next target to be recognized as a potential satellite launch site. The the local department also welcomed the project only if the company offers something permanent. Several opportunities related to employment, housing, and education were offered but ultimately failed due to disagreement between the two parties. Up until now, the situation seems more optimistic, but the project is still very far from the time of building the orbital accelerator. In any case, if Spin Launch succeeds in their orbital project, do you think that their system could beat out SpaceX's rocket in terms of sending satellites into orbit? To be fair, it does sound doable. Let's not forget that Spin Launch's original goal was to get rid of dependence on fuel in rocket construction, so they provide a more inexpensive alternative. Normally, a conventional rocket weighing thousands of tons consumes 85% of the total propellant just to launch the booster. Thus, the fuel demand for each launch is extremely large, which explains why SpaceX is actively looking for cheap fuel sources that can be produced in space to supply their giant rockets. For spin launch, they just need to throw the rocket into the atmosphere so they don't need that amount of fuel. Therefore, the cost of electricity is just generally lower than the cost of fuel. According to the report, Spin Launch will only cost its customers around $2,500 per kilogram, which is roughly one-fifth the cost of today's systems and slightly less than the $2,700 per kilogram on the Falcon 9. Additionally, the orbital accelerator is driven by movement inside a vacuum chamber to maximize velocity without heating up due to air resistance, so it would be a good idea if we consider sending it to the moon, which has a 100% vacuum atmosphere. At this point, much of the external protection infrastructure can be eliminated so costs can be much lower. Secondly, the thrust created by the orbital system to lift the second stage is not small. The tether chamber inside can rotate at a speed of 450 rpm creating an acceleration of over 10,000 Gs. After launch, the launcher can reach speeds and altitudes equivalent to SpaceX's Falcon 9 at a speed of more than 2 kilometers per second. Thank you, Scott Manley, for this useful information. On the other hand, like SpaceX's Starship or other innovative ideas, any invention always comes with many risks. Some are concerned about the technical troubles that Spin Launch's engineers may have to face and resolve. For example, at a speed of 450 rotations per minute, the system must accurately calculate the time and degree of load release through the exit port. Therefore, the release mechanism only has about a third of a millisecond to complete its job. In the worst case, if a mistake occurs, the vehicle cannot go through the tunnel but will collide very harshly with the chamber wall, leading to damage to both the rocket and the structure. Not to mention accidents could happen inside a narrow exit tunnel, which are difficult to clear and repair. There's no doubt that infrastructure recovery operations will require more effort and time than unshielded structures such as conventional launch pads or boosters. Also, the maximum payload capacity for each launch of the rocket is only 200 kilograms which is only a very small proportion of the Falcon 9's 22.8 tons and the Starship's 150. With Falcon 9's high launch density currently at about 3.97 days per launch and even in the future, Starship will be used to ferry Starlink satellites, this electric-powered system is unlikely to surpass SpaceX's rockets in terms of satellites being put into orbit. All in all, Spin Launch's orbital accelerator is a suitable choice for the small object segment. It's very different from SpaceX's rockets, which are aimed at the heavy payload segment, launched in large numbers. If Spin Launch 
If Spin Launch can solve the current problem related to construction location and prevent technical risks, the company can definitely carve out a chunk of the market, becoming a game changer in the aerospace industry. And that's about it, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.